Hello friends, this is Rupesh and I'm watching C Webinar video series on C++ and this topic is about an ordered set in C++ STL. So before going this, I would like to explain a set. So what is the meaning of set? So let's suppose you have these numbers, one, two, these numbers, or maybe again five. Now if you are putting these numbers into a simple set, I mean STD set, then I'll push this one here, I'll push two here, before pushing 2, it will, I mean, check whether 2 already exists or not. If it exists, it will not push. So, 3 is not existing. It will push 1. Yeah, it exists. So, it will not push. 2, it exists. It will not push. Then 5. And then 6. And then 5. Oh, it exists. So, it will not push. And maybe we are putting 0. So, it will push 0. Now, this is one property that it contains the unique elements. Notice this I am talking about set not unordered set. So in order to understand this what is this unordered set you need to understand first what is set. So first thing is it is unique. So if you have set of elements and you don't know how many times you have what. So what you can do you can insert everything into one set and you can be sure that okay all the elements are unique in the set. Now you can iterate over this set and you are done. Now second property of set is it is ordered data structure I mean when you will get the first element we have zero here right so zero will be the first element when you will get it because it will be coming as sorted order so it will be like zero one two three five and six like this. So remember these two properties, these are very important. Now let's come to this unordered set. So this unordered set have this property. It will contain unique elements. Now this is not there in unordered set because it is unordered. So you remember if you are using set, how we used to write? We used to write std set. It means it is ordered set. So ordered underscore set is not there it is just simply called set but you can consider this as std underscore set so these two are actually equal but we don't write ordered set we just simply say set so it means it is implicitly ordered so this was one important point that it will not be ordered means it will contain unique elements but when you will take those elements out then it will not be in sorted order like how it was in case of set okay so this ordered is not there with with this unordered set so this is the only or main difference now you might ask okay what is the use of this case then now let me tell you that see actually it depends on the requirement why you will go for set because you need both of these things but sometimes you may only need uniqueness you don't need ordered because i just want to remove the duplicates of my whole list because I'm having millions of data and it's just that I will use set and I don't have to worry about whether this already exists or not. There are other ways to do that but we can use unordered set to actually remove duplicates and we don't care about the order. I'm okay if it is not in sorted order. So one and two is there with set and only one is there with unordered set. It's very clear. Okay, with this, let's move to these points. So the zeroth point, which is our first point, unordered set is an associative container that contains set of unique objects. Okay, search, insertion, and removal have average constant time complexity. And why it is having average constant time complexity? Just because internally the elements are organized into buckets and it uses hashing to insert into the buckets. So if you know hashing, it will be very easy for you to understand that okay, it is constant time complexity because hashing is actually a way to store the data and retrieve it very fast. So we use hashing for that. Don't worry if you don't know that. Anyway, you don't need to know the internals in order to use this ordered set. This is my interest so I tell you all these things. And don't worry, uh, I'll cover all those things in my data structure algorithm classes uh, which I'm starting after 3-4 videos. So hold on till that time. Okay, 
So this allows fast access to individual elements since once a hash is computed, it refers to the exact bucket the element is placed into. Shall I give you the example a little bit? Okay, I'll give you the example. Let me clean this and let's suppose you have these numbers. So they are 1.0, 3.1. So you can have any example. I have taken the float example. Now for hashing, you need a hash function which will give you the key. So let's consider these are the values. So in my function, let's suppose I'm calling function and this is like a value. So first time I'll pass 1.0. Now this function, what it does internally, it takes whatever is there after this point means for now it is zero at first time. So it will return me zero. In that case, I will push this value into zeroth bucket. Let's suppose we have these buckets here. 0. So I'll push this 1.0 into here. Okay, I'll get this 3.1. So I have the bucket which is 1 here. So I'll push the 3.1. I have another bucket which is 0.9. So I will have bucket number 9 and I'll push this 6.9 in that. And similarly, I'll have bucket for 2 and I'll put 9.2. And oh, wait a minute, I skipped this, right? So 8.1 will actually go here and 9.2 will go here and as this is 10.0 so we already have 0 so this is 10.0 so can you see this now we have arranged our data into bucket this is how it would be doing I mean internally not exactly in this order but something like this I'm just giving you an example here okay so now the storage part is done now you will query right and as I said it will be a constant time lookup so if I'm telling, dude, tell me whether this exists or not. Oh, I skipped this also. <laughs> How can I do this? 4.2. Oh, let me. So let me count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2, 2, 4, and 3, 7. Now it is okay. <laughs> you guys might be shouting that I missed this, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so I was talking about how you will find that whether uh, this exists in our data structure or not. So for this, what you will do, you will again pass this 6.9 to this particular function which will give you 9. It means it is telling that go ahead and look into 9 number bucket. So you will see that, oh, I found it in one attempt only. Otherwise, let's suppose if this list I mean this data is arranged in this order only or maybe sorted order then also you have to at least apply binary search right in order to get it but here you got it in constant time but don't think that a binary search is bad idea no hashing has its own disadvantage when the data grows too much let's like suppose it is millions and trillions then in that case we have to rearrange all these hashing I mean we have to create different different buckets and rearrange all these values and that is a costly process. So I'm telling you this data structure is always situational. In what situation you will use what? If you know data structure very well, then you can deal with this. So I hope you would have understood. Uh, so I have given 6.9 example. Let's suppose you are finding this 3.1. So you'll pass this 3.1 into this. It will return 1. And now you will see the bucket number one, then you're getting here. So this is also constant time. And maybe if you are finding 8.1, so 8.1 will also return one here and you will see, okay, this is not my data. This is my data. So in second attempt, you got it. So, but it, still it is a constant time. It's not like you will keep on searching in the list. No, you are eliminating so much of comparison. So this is how a uh, hashing typical hashing work internally it is little more than this but i hope this is enough to understand what is hashing i'm i mean i'm not supposed to explain you what is hashing here but anyway i did so this is how it works with the bucket case so let's read this line again this allows fast access to individual elements since once a hash is computed it refers to the exact bucket the element is placed into so can you see our example here once this hash was done, now if I'm searching something, I am directly going to that particular bucket, right? With these values. So here my function is returning whatever is there after this point and I'm making bucket on that basis, but internally what it is doing is not actually similar to this, okay? But the idea is similar. So with that, why unordered set? 
maintain a collection of unique items with fast insertion and removal this is the main point why we will use an ordered set i told you uniqueness see this is the reason so let's go to the program here as it is saying that we can create our unordered set with these values but see 4 and 4 2 and 2 3 and 3 so we have so many duplicates now if i will say just print them it will print not necessarily in the sorted order but definitely duplicates will not be there so let's run this and find out how it works so compiled and successfully so if i'll execute this see if you see the output first it is finding whether this two exist inside this or not and we can just simply compare that search as that object dot end so if it is not equal to end means we i mean we did find what we were looking for so i'm printing this now i'm iterating over this unordered set and see three two one four it is not in sorted order but definitely unique elements can you see this so as i said in the beginning you will go for set when you want first and second both the property you want uniqueness and you want sorted order then you will go for set if you want only uniqueness you will go for unordered set that makes sense right with this i would sum this video but don't go anywhere without liking i know you will forget thanks for watching and if you're new to this channel don't hesitate to subscribe because we have long journey data structure algorithms and i'm sure you would love to know all these things so consider subscribing i'll see you in the next videos bye bye